ಶ್ರೀಮದೇವ ದೇವಿ ಸ್ವರೂಪ ಶ್ರೀರಾಮಕೃಷ್ಣಾಯ ನಮಃ ರವಿಯ ಪ್ರವರಾಜಿಕ ಇಷ್ಟ ಪ್ರಾಣಮಾತಜಿ ರೆಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ಎಲ್ದರ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಡಿಯರಸ್ ಡಿವೋಟೀಸ್ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ನಾರಾಯಣಾಯ ಆನ್ ಫ್ರೈಡೇ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಜುಲೈ ವಾಸ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ನಿಶ್ಚಲಾನಂದ ಜಿ ಮಹಾರಾಜಸ್ ಬರ್ತ್ ಡೇ Shri Swami Nishalananda Ji was the founder and first president of the Ramakrishna Center of South Africa. We are indeed blessed that the revered Maharaj introduced us to our master Shri Ramakrishna, the holy mother Shri Sharada Devi and to Swami Vivekananda. By following the teachings of these incarnations of God, our lives become meaningful and blessed. Today's talk on Swami Adbhutananda is taken from the book God Lived With Them by Swami Chetanananda. Swami Adbhutananda, affectionately known as Lattu Maharaj, was born in the family of a poor villager in the district of Chapra in Bihar. He was given the name Raktu Ram, which means, O Ram, be thou the protector of this child. His parents could barely provide one good meal a day for the family despite their constant hard labor. Latu was 5 years old when he lost his parents and was left in the care of his uncle who was very affectionate towards him. Unfortunately, Latu's uncle had a tendency to spend beyond his means and this finally led him into debt. He was ultimately forced to sell all his possessions to his creditors and move to Kolkata to provide for his livelihood. Latu came to the city and was hired as a houseboy in the house of Ramachandra Datta, who was one of the first disciples of Sri Ramakrishna. Ramachandra loved to speak about the master which enkindled Latu's passionate love for God. One day Latu heard Ramachandra repeating some of Sri Ramakrishna's teachings. God sees into the mind of a man without concern for what he is or where he is. He who yearns for God and wants none other than God, to such a man God reveals himself. One should call on him with a simple and innocent heart. Without sincere longing none can see God. one should pray to him in solitude and weep for him only then will he bestow his mercy these words impressed latu greatly and he could sometimes be found lying covered with his blanket quietly wiping tears from his eyes latu eagerly awaited for an opportunity to meet shri ramakrishna one sunday early early 1880 While Ramachandra was getting ready to go to Dakshineshwar, Latu asked him, Would you take me with you? I want to see Sri Ramakrishna. Observing Latu's earnestness, Ramachandra agreed. When the master saw Latu, he asked Ramachandra, Ram, did you bring this boy with you and where did you get him? I see some holy signs in him. In this first meeting itself master touched latu and the boy went into an ecstatic state after his meeting latu lost his interest to work and longed to come back to dakshineshwar eventually latu moved to dakshineshwar he began a life of rigorous spiritual discipline under the master's guidance coupled with continual service to him through the careful training and divine influence of master Latu became an illumined saint. Latu's lack of formal education made him unique among Sri Ramakrishna's disciples because his mind was uncluttered by intellectualism and not trained to doubt. He absorbed the instructions of the master with an unquestioning simplicity. His single-minded approach to God was wonderful in every way, and he was quite unique among the disciples of Sri Ramakrishna. Swami Vivekananda therefore gave him the monastic name Swami Adbhutananda meaning he who finds bliss in the wonderful nature of atman Swami ji once said 
Latu is the greatest miracle of Sri Ramakrishna. Having absolutely no education, he has attained to the highest wisdom simply by the touch of Master. It did not matter that Latu had no book learning, as Latu had direct access to the fountainhead of knowledge. The result was that great scholars and philosophers would sit at his feet to hear the words of wisdom that fell from his lip. Sri Ramakrishna used to say that when a ray of light comes from the great source of all light, all book learning loses its value. His own life bore testimony to this fact. Latu was extremely fortunate that he got the opportunity to live with Master and serve him for over six years. One day, while Latu was massaging Sri Ramakrishna's feet, the Master asked, Do you know what your Lord Ram is doing now? Latu was dumbfounded and kept quiet. The Master said, Your Lord Ram is now passing an elephant through the eye of an eagle. Latu understood that Master, out of compassion, was pouring spirituality into him. Later, Latu reminisced, Did you know that the Master snatched me from the snares of the world? I was an orphan, but Master flooded me with love and affection. If Master had not accepted me, I would have been like an animal spending all my days working like a slave. My life would have been worth nothing. Master used to tell me, Always keep your mind spotless. Don't allow impure thoughts to enter it. If you find such desires tormenting you, pray to God and chant his name. He will protect you. If the mind still will not remain calm, then go to the temple of the mother and sit before her. Or else, come here to me. It was great fun to live with Sri Ramakrishna. Not only was he a spiritual guide to his disciples, but he would also join them in picnics, go to the theatre with them, or watch their enjoyable games. In the middle of 1885, Master's throat became sore. This was the first indication of cancer. To conveniently treat him, the devotees moved Sri Ramakrishna from Dakshineshwar to Shampakur. Latu was his personal attendant, so he went with the master. Between his duties, Latu continued his spiritual disciplines and often experienced ecstasy. Sri Krishna says in the Gita, If a man worships me and meditates upon me with an undistracted mind, devoting every moment to me, I shall supply all his needs. Latu Maharaj surrendered himself to Sri Ramakrishna wholeheartedly. After the master's passing away, he practiced various sadhanas and explained, it is he who is taking me by the hand through all these disciplines. A Sanskrit poet once said that the ideal human character is as strong as a thunderbolt and as soft as a flower. Latu Maharaja's outward manner was stern and sometimes even forbidding. But once a person was allowed past that serious exterior, he would find that inwardly Latu was sweetness and tenderness itself. Once a drunkard came to Latu Maharaja at midnight and in his drunken state, insisted on offering the Swami some food so that afterwards he could take it as prasad. The man was rather aggressive, but Latu Maharaj quietly accepted the food and the man went away satisfied. Latu Maharaj commented, Such people want a little sympathy. Why should we not give it to them? Towards the end of Latu's life, a devotee asked him, Do you feel now that the world is a burden? He answered, Look, when you dive deep into the Ganges, 
Though there are thousands of pounds of water above you, you don't feel that weight. Similarly, if you plunge into God's creation, yet still hold on to him, you will not feel his burden. Then the world becomes a place of merriment. During the end of his life, Latu Maharaj suffered from diabetes and minor physical ailments. Sometime in the last year of his life, he developed a blister on his leg and eventually gangrene set in. Although the doctors operated on him, unfortunately, the disease took its course. Latu Maharaj passed away in the holy city of Varanasi at 12.10 p.m. on Saturday, 24th April, 1920. Swami Turiananda wrote to Miss Josephine McLeod, an American devotee of Swami Vivekananda, on 12th May 1920. I am extremely sorry to let you know that Swami Adbhutananda Lattu Maharaj breathed his last on the 24th of April. His passing away was indeed wonderful as he entered a meditative state from the first moment he fell ill and remained absorbed in that state until he gave up that body. Although he received the best local medical help, he passed on in 10 days. He showed no signs of pain during his illness. But the wonder of all wonders was that after his death, when his body was placed in a sitting position to conform with some of the funeral rites, we found him looking so beautiful, so serene, so full of peace and bliss. His face beamed with light and an intelligence unspeakable. Really, it was a sight for the gods to see. Latu Maharaj completely fulfilled the name Agbhutananda, one who enjoys the wonderful bliss of Brahman. May the life of this rare saint Inspire us Godward. Hari Om Tatsap.
Let us concentrate our minds on the glorious form of God seated in our hearts. Sri Ramakrishna says, Bhakti is the one essential thing. Who can ever know God through reasoning? I want love of God. Hanumanji lived only for Sri Ram. A prayer to Hanumanji reminds us of his amazing devotion to the Lord. It says, I prostrate to Hanumanji, who, with bowed head, palms folded in adoration, and eyes brimming with tears, frequents every place where Sri Ram's name is glorified. May God bless us so that we too can benefit by repeating his sweet name. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Om Sarve Shan Swasti. Swami Ji Ki Jai Sarvarishi Muniyor Ki Jai Parvati Patay Hara Hara Maha 